Welcome to the Morning Swim Show for Friday, June 24th, 2011. I'm your host, Peter Bush, in the Phoenix Mind of the Dirt today. We'll talk to Tyler McGill. He was the silver medalist in the 100 fly at last year's Pan Pacific Championships, and he joins us right now in the Phoenix Monitor from Auburn, Alabama. Hey, Tyler, welcome back to the show. How you doing? Hey, Peter. Thanks for having me. How's the butterfly business going? It's so far so good. It's been a good summer of training. I'm just uh, excited to get a little bit of rest here and head over to China. Last summer, I don't want to say it was a breakout summer for you because you were a star in college. I mean, you've been a stud for years, but post-suit era, I think a lot of people were looking to prove that they weren't just fast because of the, the suits. And you proved that last year. That must have meant something to you. Yeah, I mean, it was, obviously it was just great to get out there and swim fast again. And uh, after a disappointing college season, uh, I just wanted to get back to work and uh, really work hard and, and swim as fast as I knew how I could. Um, and that kind of paid off at the end of last summer. So it was good to see that and uh, it was good to kind of move forward from there. Can you catch Phelps in the 100 fly? It's going to take a one hell of a swim. Um, you know, obviously, he's always going to be on his A game and ready to go, and uh, I have to be the same, uh, regardless of how fast he swims. You know, yeah. I just control how fast I can swim, and, and it may be enough in a day, it may not, but uh, I can't uh, look back and, and say I didn't put my best foot forward. So uh, it's going to take a one hell of a swim this summer, or one really good swim to, to do that. Is there a, a strategy, the best way, you think, that would be to beat him and to become the best in the world at the 100 fly. I mean, he kind of proved in 2008 that if you just try and burn him on the first 50, he can still catch on the second 50. I mean, can you maybe beat him in the second 50? I mean, what would be the method for success against him? Um, I think the best method is to go out there and, and swim the race that's going to give you the best time. You know, if you go out there and, and try to swim really fast uh, to be ahead of him at the 50, you're going to end up hurting a little bit more than you at the end. And, um, you know, this past weekend in Santa Clara, I wanted to put a really good swim out there and um, almost tried to do that, you know, where you try to go too fast at the beginning and you end up spin spinning your wheels and um, not getting any kind of result that you want. So, you know, just staying to what's going to give you the best time, I think, is what's going to give you the best chance, uh, regardless of what he's doing. Do you do that sometimes strategically in season to just see how it would feel to, you know, to go out super fast and see if you can hold on? I mean, is it something that you do for experience, if nothing else, before the big meet? Right. I think uh, you know you always have to play around with some things and and see how you can swim your fastest. But at the same time, I've always been a, a rhythm swimmer and just trying to muscle through things. Um, doesn't always give me the results that I that I need, and um, so going out really fast and really hard is one thing, but making sure you're staying within your stroke and doing what you do best is is just as important. What do you when you're training and you're thinking, okay, it's race day. This is what I've got to be at that 50 by. I mean, mm -hmm. is it 24 flat? Is it a little bit faster? A little bit slower? I mean, what's ideally for you at Worlds this summer going to be that 50 split? Right. Uh, to be the time that I want to be at the end of the summer, um, I'm going to have to be out 24 low. Um, you know, i, I got to be in a position where I'm competing with the world's best, and uh, that's what they're taking the, the, the 100 down at the 50, and uh, you kind of put yourself in a hole if you're working from behind from there. So uh, I think 24 low is, is um, what I'm going to need to be. When you look at the landscape, aside from Phelps, who again we know is the, the favorite right now in both butterflies, mm -hmm. what do you see in the world right now in terms of depth in that 100 fly? Is it relatively open or is it uh, just as competitive but maybe not as high profile guys? Right. I think last summer you saw that you know, Michael was you know, a good head and shoulders above everybody else, but then there was about seven, eight guys who were within a matter of tenths of each other. Um, from my 51.6 up until like a 52.0, there's a lot of guys. So um, it's it's that group of people that's trying to make a push and get closer, uh, and the people that can do that is going to put themselves on the on the medal stand in in Shanghai. Tell me about how you train a little bit. I mean, who is Bousquet, kind of your butterfly training partner there at Auburn? 
Yeah, when he, I mean, obviously his main focus is is the 50 freestyle and, and the freestyle events, and uh, but Fred's a great butterflyer, and uh, the way that we train, um, you know, Fred's a great person to race daily in practice when we do butterfly. So uh, that's my main person I train with, but also obviously it's one of those situations where a lot of the time I have to focus on myself, uh, which is really good when it comes to the end of the season. Is you know I've been training by myself and and with my group of guys without any butterflies, and at the end of the year it's going to take my focus uh, to myself and to really try to make sure that I'm doing the things that I've been working hard all season to do. Is there like a specific thing that you're really trying to improve about your stroke or your underwater kick? What's something that's going to take you to the next level? Um, just off of uh, what we've been watching from last summer and the first couple races this year is uh, my underwaters have gotten better, uh, but I'm really trying to improve on the first few strokes of each lap just to kind of set myself up uh, for the rest of the lap. Uh, we've done a lot of breakdown of the 15 and 35 in the finish, and uh, I'm right where I need to be from the 35 in. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, getting some speed underwater and then making sure I'm hitting the first few strokes and setting myself up for the lap. So you wouldn't mind if maybe it was a 115-meter butterfly? Just a little extra closing distance for you? A little bit extra, yeah. I, uh, in uh, my past, I was uh, originally a 200 butterfly, so I think that would that could help me out a little bit, but the, the race is 100 meters and that's what I'm trying to be great at. Well, Tyler, good luck with uh, training the rest of the summer. You know, uh, my little brother is going to be joining the fold there pretty soon. Yep, yeah, he, uh, I just got word the other day and we're excited to have him and uh, it's going to be a great fall for Auburn swimming. Yeah, I never thought I'd see a bush wearing the Auburn stripes, but uh, anything is possible, right? I guess so, yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Tyler, and uh, good luck at Worlds. All right, Peter, thank you. All right, that's Tyler McGill joining us in the Funniest Monitor from Auburn, and that is it for, the t uh, for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you and all you butterflyers to keep your head down at the finish.